So Pavel is asking a question. I'm taking part from the first online marathon and before that I only read a couple of books by Srila Prabhupada. While reading the Holy Scriptures during the online marathon, every day I want to come back and read more and more, taking part in this marathon and knowing that thousands of people read simultaneously. I feel great support and that motivates and disciplines me. It's much easier to read like this. And I take every opportunity to read. I found answers to many of my questions. Interactive meetings and lectures are very useful and cultivate even more interest to the Holy Scriptures and to the, to, to the works and to the personality of Srila Prabhupada. I want to express gratitude to the entire team of the marathon, to all the guests, participants, it's a very powerful and unique project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pavel, for your realization and inspiration. You see, it helps. Uh, a person just by himself wouldn't uh, have enough courage to take a book and read, to eat so much uh, text, uh, so many chapters. We've read 18,000 verses in Sriman Bhagavatam. <laughs> Give somebody an instruction or to yourself. Just sit down on your own and read in 10 days 18,000 texts. Just the number itself uh, <laughs> makes the, the, the mind get disturbed. And this concentration, like Lord Chaitanya said, when we do it together, Sankirtana means togetherness, um, doing this together helps us to overcome this number of the texts. And there is a, a responsibility here before others and before myself, first of all. Thank you, Pavel. Svetlana is asking, uh, thank you for the constant magical nectar. During the marathon, we are in spiritual world. Yes, Svetlana, this is it. We are in spiritual world. We are on the ship of Lord Chaitanya. We, we are on the ship and uh, if this is the ship, the spiritual world uh, protects us. How can you feel it? You come out to outside and it feels like you are taking out of home, outside this atmosphere together with you. It doesn't remain in the book or in the computer. It comes out together with you and you can see through the prism of your experience and your current vision uh, through the, this experience of, ex of uh, the Holy Scriptures, you can see the world and these external factors, disturbing factors, which can um, disturb you, they, 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 they don't influence you. And that's called the ship of Lord Chaitanya. Ilya is asking, uh, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, no words. The more I find out, the lower my obeisances are and there is more desire to serve the mission. Ilya, preserve this mood. This is a very dear mood, very, very good mood. Keep it. A lot of people feel it at the very beginning of practice, but not everyone has the intelligence and decisiveness uh, to keep this mood because it has a tendency to get lost. My illusion is uh, that's the way it acts. Um, you can uh, lose this mood, so you have to preserve this mood, please. Nadezhda is asking, why only Lord can tell about these uh, confidential relationships? No, not only the Lord can, but He can do it the best, because He is the object of love in these relationships. He is not the subject, he is the object and he can do it perfectly. 
The Lord is the only, the only one who our love can be uh, applied to. It's not applicable to anyone else. Try to love someone else, but in a while you will feel that this love is has imperf imperfections, because this love is not de um, de um, aimed at loving someone else. It's only for the for the Lord. Uh, what about loving a child? Uh, we love the child, but we love not just the child. We love the Krishna inside in his heart, and we uh, manifest this through our child. This love to to the Lord. It's not this body we like. We love Krishna in this child, and therefore only the Lord can tell about this uh, confidential relationship. Um, in in perfection, and also pure devotees can do that because they're engaged. Because the Lord Himself cannot uh, display this love without uh, His associates. For us, uh, He is our object, and for Him, we are His object of love. So we can transfer this love too, but not as pur purely as the Lord Himself. Екатерина is asking, could the sannyasis um, offer the food cooked by the worldly people? Uh, could, did they take this food cooked by um, ordinary people? How did they treat this food? Did they treat it as energy which was sent to them by the Lord so that they can gain more energy? If we talk about sannyasi, the classical sannyasi, who are really real sannyasi, they don't need food at all. Their only food is the holy name. He doesn't need anything else. He is never hungry. And why do sannyasis come to the houses of uh, ordinary people only to give them the love to God? And the offerings they sannyasis accept from the people is just the uh, it's the lead for for the sannyasis to come uh, to this house and give them the benefit. It's not for the sannyasi to take the food because he's hungry. If that's how sannyasi goes uh, from house to house asking for food because he's hungry, then he's not a sannyasi. Maybe he may look as a sannyasi externally, but he's not a sannyasi internally. That's not what sannyasis do. They go around the houses to give, to distribute love to the people. And it's a, a very big mercy for the people. That's the uh, spiritual principle. When people say you should um, um, offer something to the sannyasi or brahmachari, you are not giving, you are taking during the time when you are giving. Uh, this is the spiritual principle. And externally, it feels like you are giving something, but internally, spiritually, you are obtaining, you are gaining. And that's the mood of sannyasi. And he can uh, spiritualize any food. If you, Whatever you give to sannyasi, he will spiritualize it, except for the meat, of course. And that's, we don't even consider that. Dead uh, food, which, uh, the re which involves violence, he would never accept it. Prabhupada also did this. He came to the ordinary people's houses, they cooked for him. Some of them were meat eaters, but they didn't cook meat food for Pra Prabhupada, they cooked something vegetarian for him. And Prabhupada said, if there will be something vegetarian, I'll accept it, I'll go to this house. And that's how uh, Prabhupada accepted this food. But why did he do it? Not to uh, eat uh, just to eat, but to give them mercy. When the sannyasi takes an offering as a food or money or things, in reality he takes their karma and gives the people opportunity to get closer to Krishna. 
Why people cannot get closer to Krishna? They have uh, hard karma. They have no... Um, that that's uh, and they cannot approach uh, get closer to Krishna. So when a sannyasi takes some of their karma, they have an opportunity to get closer to Krishna. They can ask a question, they can offer something or um, do something for Krishna. Tatiana is asking. Please, could you explain how the movement of Lord Chaitanya spread around the world from the time, from the old times and until now? Is it only Srila Prabhupada that brought this mercy to the Western world and other uh, continents? Yes, Tatiana, unfortunately, this is it. That's how it was. At those times, nobody could come to the West. The, the first who started doing it was Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He is a spiritual grandfather of Srila Prabhupada. And his son, Bhaktivinoda Saraswati Thakur, he, the son of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, uh, also started doing this. But the first person was Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He started writing, he started uh, sending, uh, posting to London to London universities, uh, the, his works, and uh, it was quite successful there, people were raising the, and even the higher, um, uh, higher circles, like the scientists were reading this, and then Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Maharaj started to send his sannyasi disciples there, so that they can also try to do something there, but nothing uh, worked out of it. They were not able to change anything. They came back without anything. Maya was uh, too uh, uh, strong there. And all the... Uh, fr when you come from the materially poor India to the English, let's say, world um, monopoly, all these desires there, they were not able to uh, promote anything there. Nobody was listening to them there. So that those few people who were sent to the Western world, they just left without any result. But before Bhaktivinoda Thakura, even in India itself, um, the, the knowledge was hidden. Mayavadi were prevailing and Mayavada would uh, prevail again after the Lord Chaitanya's de departure. And the six Goswami, when they departed, the uh, Vaishnavism was slowing down. And then, after a while, Bhaktivinoda Thakura started to, um, re rena to give renaissance to this um, uh, knowledge. And then Srila Prabhupada, sorry, and only the devotees of Lord Chaitanya only uh, the people empowered by Lord Chaitanya were able to, to perform this revolution. Ordinary saints could not do that. That's as for the West. We are, this, this is uh, for the West, about the Western, uh, spreading the knowledge about the West, into the Western world. Aksana Grigorieva is asking, Ambrosia is the sweetest nectar of the uh, lilas of Lord Chaitanya. I have great uh, deep uh, gratitude to, uh, to Lord Chaitanya and to his devotees for this Sankirtana. This is uh, earth-breaking. Yes, uh, we will never be able to thank enough Prabhupada and his disciples so that they uh, uh, preserved all this knowledge and they continued spreading this uh, knowledge and our task is to take it on and continue uh, uh, preaching and telling people about this and uh, people will get this spiritual uh, benefit so that they can find out about the Lord. That's what we also can do or try to do it. 
for thousands of people, this is a, a spiritual breakthrough. Yes, that's a very good expression. Tatiana, I cook for Krishna at the kitchen and the ki uh, my husband cooks meat for himself. I try to keep my kitchen clean as much as possible. How can I understand whether Krishna takes uh, or accepts what I cook for him? If you offer it uh, sincerely, yes, he will, uh, or, uh, he will accept it. Meat or not meat, um, it's time, place, circumstances. It depends, uh, it's important not to cook in the same uh, pot as the meat is cooked in. Prabhupada, uh, when he arrived to America, he lived in a flat and he stored his products or vegetables, fruit in the same fridge uh, uh, as other people were keeping meat in. So it's time, place, circumstance. And your sincerity, if you're offering love, you're not offering food, you're offering love to Krishna. And that's the most important. That's what you should focus on. Oh, Krishna, please accept this food with love. As much as I could, I've, I've applied my effort. I was cooking not for myself, I was cooking for you. Maybe I didn't, it didn't work out really well. But you know me better than anyone else, because you are in my heart. And I have no qualities to cook for you, because Mama Yashoda cooks for you and Radharani, and who am I? But by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, I can cook something for you, and I hope that you will accept it from me. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to think about you, to remember you. That's all. That's uh, how you could offer sincerely, and Krishna in your heart will be, um, will be very pleased with your uh, pray, praying. Krishna says, when Gopi started to speak about Krishna, complain about him in their own words, uh, the, the sounds of Vedas stopped being uh, so attractive for him. What was more attractive for Krishna uh, were these feelings or maybe worldly um, uh, fussing uh, towards Krishna. Uh, that's what he uh, likes most. And of course you will learn mantras. After a while you will understand the meaning of those mantras and you will apply your emotion, which I tried to describe with my own words. If you p apply your emotion into those Sanskrit texts, then you will see how he would, uh, Krishna would accept your food. Krishna needs our love. If you cook uh, sincerely, your, your husband will stop cooking meat. He will be asking you, what did you cook? May I try? Because there will be love there. Nobody can refuse Krishna's love. Because it's not just food, it's love, prasadam, mercy, that's how it's translated. I'm in the Krishna consciousness movement for a long time. It's hard to get up in the morning. I've tried everything, but there is no stability. Can you give me, uh, share a secret? Mm, secret. Uh, your devotion to the spiritual master, you, you say you are in the movement for a long time, uh, it, it depends on how much you want to satisfy your guru. It seems like this is the ordinary words. For those who are in the movement for a long time, they think that these words are just words. But these are not just simple words. This will immerse into your heart the enthusiasm to get up early. Um, the more you understand your attachment to your spiritual master, the more it will be applicable to you. You will realize that your life belongs to your spiritual master. This physical body which lies in bed for a long time and cannot get up, it doesn't belong to us. It, it's the property of the spiritual master, of Krishna, of your guru. 
This is one um, thing that can, can I, I can share. I'm only sharing my realizations. Maybe uh, some other people will have different realizations, but that's what I can share. Another thing is fire. Just imagine you are on fire. You are sleeping, then the alarm goes on, and don't think it's an, an alarm clock. It's not an alarm clock. Think that this is fire, fire approaching you. The fire of material existence, it's burning us. And in order to speed this process, to exit this uh, fire, because sleep is a fuel if the fire approaches and it starts to burn, that's sleep. In order to speed this process of understanding, getting up early, try to uh, follow the time. Try to see how time passes by. Every spiritual seeker has to do that. How does time pass? How quickly it passes? If you feel this time, you won't want to sleep for too long. You will go to bed with one thought. I want to get up as soon as possible. As soon as possible the alarm goes on, you will get up. You will get up not because you have to do it, no, you will want to do it, and these are different things. You will want to, because you are waiting for a meeting with Krishna. You get up to do what? Not to just simply leave. That's how people get up in the morning. They sleep, then they wake up and think, oh no, again, leave again, have to go to work. No, I'd better sleep. That's why people sleep. They don't want to experience this strange, scary, mad life, and that's normal. It's better to sleep than we'll commit less sins when we sleep. But when we have the point, the, the aim of life, the aim of life is to love Krishna, and you will start chanting his names, and he will come to you, then you won't be able to sleep. You will know that Krishna is awaiting me. I have a, a date with Krishna. I will start chanting his names and he will appear straight away. We have to revolutionize and find this method to approach the taste to chanting the holy names. Everyone will have their own findings. Somebody will appeal to the early rising and Krishna will see, oh, he is getting up for me. And you'll have the enthusiasm from Krishna for the entire day. Or someone else will approach Krishna by doing something. I will sit straight. I will, I'm getting prepared, prepared for the holy name. I'm so excited. Krishna will come. Krishna himself. It will be some governor. It will be Krishna himself. The Lord himself will come to me. I will call for him now. And this mood needs to be supported. At first, you will, you may feel like it's um, not real, fiction. No, I don't have it. But you have to continue. Initially, it will be like fiction. But then, reach, little by little, you will get taste. Krishna would not be given to you easily. So, you, if you continue... Okay, you can continue because you have to do it. Like Arjuna was told, uh, Arjuna, you have to fight because you're a Kshatriya. You have to fight. Fight for the f purpose of fight. That's how Krishna instructed Arjuna. But after a while, Arjuna understood, I'm fighting not for the sake of fight. And why am I fighting? Why Arjuna started to fight only because Krishna wanted it. This is devotion. I gave my desire to Krishna, please use it. And Krishna said, I want you to fight, then I'm ready. And this is our common desire then. I want to get up early for Krishna, for Krishna. And Krishna in my heart will say, mm, you are a serious guy, let's try together. 
and go closer to water. Uh, sprinkle on your face so, some water and the st um, these dreams will disappear. You can agree with someone else, uh, someone close to you, your friends, some devotees. You can agree so that you get up at the same time and they will support you or you could chant together. After a while, we'll start another marathon on the holy name. And we'll call it the reform of Japa, of prayers. And we'll wake up together like thousands of people, like somebody wrote here, are reading together with us. Oksana was writing the breakthrough for thousands of people. Similarly, the reform of Japa can inspire people to get up early and chant the holy names. So if you do it together with someone else, it will be easier for you. And also, for who do you do it? Try to start doing it for your guru, so that he gives you his uh, mercy. If you are in the movement for a long time, you're initiated, uh, just imagine how much effort is here, just as a, a gratitude gesture. Try to maintain your sadhana. Try to go to bed earlier. Don't eat too late. There must be fresh air in your room. If you do, then it will be easier to get up. I sleep outside. I go to bed late, but can't sleep for too long. Because my body is so full with fresh air, my eyes open in the morning. The body says, you should lie down for a little while. Why are you why are you using this body so violently, <laughs> you're uh, testing it too much? Lie down, restore yourself. Nobody's uh, asking you to go anywhere, but it's impossible. Um, the, the magpies fly around, start to scream. As soon as I get up, they fly away. The magpie doesn't see you, but it, she helps you to get up. She won't let you sleep. You try, but she will start <laughs> screaming. And as soon as I get up, and the, the, the magpie flies away. We think it's some ordinary magpie? No, Krishna is inside of your heart as well. Recently, I laid down, laid down for 20 minutes during the day. That's uh, recommended even to have a small nap. 20 minutes, no more. So in 20 minutes, I felt like, oh, it feels so good. Maybe I should lie down for 30 minutes. No, the crowd start, came and started to scream and screaming and screaming. Usually they do car, 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 but no, she was screaming and screaming. So I, I thought I'm getting up. As soon as I decided to get up, she flew away. These are just a couple of examples. Put, uh, give, give yourself a, a, an aim and Krishna will help you. A dog will start barking or the door will start slamming somewhere or somebody will drop something loudly. No, they won't let you sleep, so you won't be able to sleep. Another moment is, why is it hard to get up? That's how you can measure your uh, desires. The longer you lie in bed after the alarm, uh, measure the thickness uh, in uh, inverted comma your um, desire and it will it grows and grows during this time yes you have to fight this a little bit I don't know if I was able to help you but just shared my experience so we'll continue Artyom is asking, Artyom Apsyanikov, the marathon is like climbing up a mountain with a, an experienced instructor alone uh, to climb those uh, uh, peaks of mountains alone is impossible. Yeah, you remind me about this realization, with this realization about the Himalayan um, climbing. We were climbing very high up to the sources of Ganga, where the Lord Shiva is sitting and Ganga falls on his head. And we uh, climbed up to Yamunotri, 
Kedarnath as well, where the Lord Shiva is being Kedarnath, um, Badrinath, where the Lord Shiva is uh, meditating and performing his austerities. So you reminded me about how well, how nice it is to go to climb up together with someone else. It also reminded me about the Govardhan when during the first time I was going on Parikrama with the spiritual masters, with the experienced instructors. And apart from being protected, you also feel that you are not simply a tourist and looking, wandering around. You are uh, getting into the essence of the things because they, those instructors, they can immerse you. We were just discussing with Ivan why we need to go to these uh, holy places to find sadhus, to find the s s holy people, uh, and it, you go to the holy places not to just to just um, visit them. You need to get the benefit. The, the benefit of uh, associating with them and then the holy place may open for you. So when the first time, when we were um, uh, going on Parikrama with Indradyumna Maharaj and they were telling me about these places and uh, there were Krishna Leelas there for, for us and I understand what Artyom means now when he says that it's easier to climb together with someone else. Then the only uh, way to um, change our lives and serve the desire to the um, to to be grateful to Prabhupada is to take part in this marathon. It changes our life. Changing our lives is our gratitude to Srila Prabhupada. We are not simply reading. We are changing our lives, making it spiritual. That's the best offering for to Srila Prabhupada and our spiritual master. Pavel is asking, thank you for the marathon. It's an invaluable opportunity to immerse into the spiritual, uh, into the scriptures. I'm not able to immerse deeply, but uh, it feels like the most important and most valuable things are happening right now during the marathon. I'm sure this will be a trampling to the spiritual world for many fortunate souls closer to Krishna. But you too, Pavel, is taking part in this marathon. Immersion doesn't depend on the time or on the length of time. Immersion depends on our concentration. We can read for a long time and feel no immersion. Or we can say once Hare Krishna and go into bliss, into the spiritual world in seconds. Like Prabhupada says when he was asked, how much time do you need to become a devotee? Prabhupada said, one moment. Just live like uh, the devotees and you will become a devotee. And you are, it feels like you are immersed. Uh, it feels like your work doesn't matter. It's like entertainment for you. And your attention is on the marathon and that's important. You are the same as everyone, uh, you are the participant of the marathon like everyone else. You will receive the same mercy as everyone else, all the participants of this marathon. So please don't worry. Alena is saying, what a wonderful news, the marathon of the Holy Name. During the today's reading, I was thinking about it, and this uh, news has been released. Yes, I'm not going to describe this in detail at the moment. 
because they need to be finalized with our team. Uh, various aspects of life needs to be taken into account of all the team and participants. The point is that we'll be reading. This is what we are planning. It's not like I'm, it's, it's going to happen, but we have the desire to do it. Many people want to do it. So we'll be reading a book. written by Satsvarupa Goswami, the disciple of Srila Prabhupada, and it's called Reform of Japa, Japa Reform. It's a thin book, so we'll be reading uh, bef this book, uh, an extract uh, uh, from the book before chanting, and we'll summarize and read a little bit more, uh, so that we'll be meditating on extracts of this book all day, We'll try to uh, apply this scheme, we want to do it and we'll try, we'll try to, uh, to make this happen, we don't know when and how, please keep a, uh, an eye and uh, we will uh, communicate this to you. Aksana, please can you tell us in a couple of words how did the idea of the marathon immerse, uh, emerge, if possible? It feels like this was the mercy of the Gurudev and the entire Parampara. Indeed, any spiritual endeavors, activities, programs, preaching programs, educational programs, or creative programs, everything is connected to Krishna. And it comes from the spiritual master. That's how his impulse uh, comes, he engages his disciples and gives them inspiration. And the disciples simply, uh, we just need to want it very much, want to do something for our sp spiritual master, and then the guru in the heart of the disciple will inspire them to do some activity, uh, taking in, into account their nature, what is best for them, what he can do best. And Krishna gives this inspiration from your heart. How does the, the, this idea uh, come to us? I, I think I explained it once, but let me uh, give explain it again in a couple of words. Once I wanted to find out when was uh, Shrimad Bhagavatam read by Shukadeva Goswami. And I wanted to do during those days the seven days long readings of Shrimad Bhagavatam. Sapta means seven. So the seven day immersion. And I wanted to do it during those days when he read them. And by the will of Krishna, fate, Krishna uh, um, introduced me to one. Brijabasi, the Vaishnava, who was immersed to Krishna Leelas from his childhood, and he's our dearest Braja Sundar Prabhu, who is one of our VIP guests here. So we, uh, I got to know him, and when he invited me over at home in Vrindavan, during lunch I asked him again about these dates. I thought, hmm, maybe I should try and ask, maybe he knows. And while we were having lunch, he found, he took brought lots and lots and lots of books. They were not just Srimad Bhagavatam, there were other books, a lot of scriptures. And based on different um, sources, he found these dates. I can't give you the dates exactly now, but he found them as Vedic uh, description of the months, uh, for example, Shraddha month. So I, I found out that it's, this exists, this concept exists, and it's possible to do it, but I didn't know when to organize it. I had too many trips, flights, I had no time to stop down, to stop, to slow down. And I thought we'll do it one, one time when the time comes. And as soon as the quarantine was approaching, let's say, I was still in India, in spring, 
in February, end of February, beginning of March. And I met Raja Sundar Prabhu once again, and I asked him, could you please give me the methodology how to read Bhagavatam in seven days? And he gave me this methodology of reading only the texts. Six, a day, six hours a day for seven days. If you read that, uh, 40, 50 chapters, you will, you will be able to do that. And I thought I should try. And when I tried, I understood it's impossible. It's hard. I don't have enough uh, ability to sit down for too long, or, and I'm too I, I'm busy. There are emails, letters, lots of other responsibilities I have. So it's I understood it's not that easy. So I had this idea to organize this marathon, or we called it retreat to begin with. Then we decided to call it the marathon with a team of organizers. We got together and understood that we should do it this way. We should just read in seven day, days. And the quarantine uh, made everyone sit at home. And we understood that's how we'll catch everyone. You can't catch people outside on the streets, but when we are at home, we can. And we can help people to spend this time usefully. So that was how the plan uh, appeared. Uh, and uh, we finished the first marathon. We haven't finished yet, and we already had the plans to read Chaitanya Chiritamrita. That was the second marathon, and this is the third marathon, and we started to read the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, etc. That's how um, we, I can describe it in brief. This, uh, we have a very unusual day tomorrow, because we, ha we are in the corridor of eclipses. I feel like tomorrow, the, maybe the astrologers can say mo tomorrow is a unique planet parade. Almost all the planets will be uh, uh, stand in one row, and that happens very rarely, maybe once during Brahma Day's day, when all the planets uh, are in one row. And that happens tomorrow. So tomorrow, make you this day very unusual for you. Uh, devoted to spirituality, chant the holy names, we'll be reading, we'll be talking. Immerse you, uh, yourself in, in that, please. I, tomorrow is a wonderful time for spirituality. For those who don't follow the spiritual life, it will be a um, very um, ca uh, catastrophic day for the fates. So be careful tomorrow, especially tomorrow. And the day after is the eclipse, the last one, eclipse. But we are not worried about it. We are in a good rhythm. We study the Holy Scriptures. And our consciousness is completely uh, protected by Krishna. And Krishna uh, manages all the planets. Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, Maha Ishwaram, the great emperor of all planets, Sarva Lokam. So we have nothing to worry about. The planets will be happy that when they see how we are engaged in devotional service. Sergei is writing, Dear Valmiki Prabhu, please accept my obeisances. Hmm. I'm so used to communicating with you every day that I don't want to even think about the time when the marathon will be over in a few days. I'm desperate about this parting from you. Don't worry, Sergei, I will also miss everyone. Apply your desperation to Krishna. This world is the world of desperation. We should think about Krishna all the time, about how we are uh, not together with him, how we are linked to him. We'll find it out in the future. And you will not feel this departure. Krishna is in your heart. Thank you, Sergei. Okay, thank you everyone, all the participants of this marathon. Have a good day. 
We'll meet again in a while and continue our readings. Good, good luck. See you soon.